I'm a medical doctor. I was trained in internal medicine and I'm certified by the American Board of Internal Medicine. So I could be practicing very conventional medicine, but instead I've chosen to focus my work on the use of nutrition for patients with cancer or with other types of illnesses. And sometimes people wonder, well, how did I get involved in this line of work in the first place? In retrospect, I think I might have been a little bit more open-minded than perhaps some of my peers in medical school would have been because, for one thing, when I was a first-year medical student, I remember sitting in a lecture and hearing someone present as a fact something that I knew was a theory because I had worked in a biochemistry lab that was working on that particular topic when I was an undergraduate. Now, it wasn't a major point, but still, it made me wonder, perhaps not everything I'm learning is completely and totally proven. Another consideration was my mother's influence. My mother got interested in nutrition well before I did. She had developed trouble with arthritis in her hip. She spoke to one of her brothers, who was also a physician, and he suggested she try some calcium and magnesium. That helped her arthritis, in fact it resolved it, but it also sent her on a path a bit by bit of exploring how nutrition could be helpful for her health and for the health of one of my siblings. So there were already some seeds in place, I think, but then when I'm, I was a third year medical student, I was assigned to a team in my internal ro medicine rotation, and on that team was also an intern called Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez. Now, Nick was already engaged in a research project at the time that I met him. He was studying the work of a man named Dr. William Donald Kelly. Dr. Kelly was an orthodontist who had in response to his own health problems, developed a method of treatment based on nutrition that he then used with other people. Nick was going through Kelly's records and found a number of patients with really astonishing results. As an example, there was a gentleman who developed prostate cancer that had spread to every bone in his body. He had been admitted to the hospital in terrible pain. And when I heard about this patient, I could understand what that meant because I'd met people like that. I'd met patients in the course of my training who were admitted to the hospital with metastatic prostate cancer in terrible pain. But this particular gentleman that Nick was learning about had then gone to see Dr. Kelly, had gone on to Kelly's nutritional program, and 10 years later, he was completely recovered he was working part-time, even though he was in his late 70s, early 80s, something like that. And he was playing the violin in a ragtime band, which just totally amazed me, thinking about the people that I had seen that were somewhat similar um, to his situation. So that got me interested in what Nick was finding in Dr. Kelly's records. That got me believing that this method needed to be followed up on. But one last consideration also got me going with this, and that is that my own health started to deteriorate. I'm um, back in that biochemistry lab that I worked in as an undergraduate. I had been very, very careless with chemicals, and I think that's why I wound up developing a fatigue syndrome. I made it through medical school, I made it through my medical internship, but by the time I was done with that, I felt absolutely terrible. And I wound up going on Dr. Kelly's treatment to restore my own health. So between that recovery, through getting better myself, but also through knowing about Dr. Kelly's good results and then seeing the good case reports, the good results in Dr. Gonzalez's practice and in my own, that's what got me motivated to do this work. That's what keeps me motivated and keeps me believing that there is something here that needs to be followed up on and needs to be kept alive for future generations to be able to use. That's why I do what I do.